about not new announcements, but what the lineup is looking like and go into a little bit more detail maybe about things that were out there already. Yeah, sometimes the nature of our year is we announce products and technology and a roadmap of where we're going at NAB. And then through the course of the year coming to IBC, you see those products emerge. So we have the Pixar 6K that we'll take a look at. We're showing the Ursa Cine 12K LF. Uh, for the first time as well at a show, we're showing the Ursa Cine 17K. So that's our 65 mil equivalent product. And following the announcement in the summer with Apple, we're also showing a prototype of Ursa Immersive. So all four new cameras for the year here at the IBC show this year. Fantastic. And the Ursa Immersive was an interesting announcement because I guess a lot of people were looking at this and thinking, what does, what does high resolution give us beyond just more Ks and where's it going to be used? When it came in with Apple, suddenly a lot of people went, ah, that makes sense to me. Yeah, it's, a, it's, it's, a, it's an interesting new way and a development in how our camera technologies have been adapted into new technologies. Um, it's a new paradigm, if you want, in filmmaking, where working with Apple, trying to understand how we can create immersive tools from camera through post-production. Uh, obviously, their technology leads with Virtual Pro in how audiences will experience that. But as filmmakers, we need the right tools. Um, and it's a really interesting development that will continue through this year in a beta program. We'll see where we are in 2025, but taking our core Ursa Cine technologies and adapting them into a new, entirely way of working or creating content. Fantastic. And we have the little pixels. Just This is the first time I'm seeing one, touching one. It is small, but it's a, it's a hefty package, yep. which is nice. You know, you can feel the coldness of the metal in it and all of that good stuff. I guess the question on everyone's lips is when they can get their grubby paws on one in the nicest possible way. Right. And you might have a little bit of an answer. Yeah, so we're now shipping. So product is coming. Um, we'll be getting the, the orders out as soon as possible. Um, slight note on that, it'll be the L mount version that's shipping first. So that's the first one out of the gate. Then we'll be looking to get the PL version out as soon as possible with the EF version to follow. So all three of the models will be available as soon as possible with the L mount shipping now. So that's the Pixar shipping, but uh, where are we at for anyone who ordered Nurse at 12K? Okay, so likewise, now shipping. So first units are going out of the factory, put them in the hands already of a few individuals. And there's a number of quite good high-end production companies that already started to work with those. So we'll start to see the volume of those ramp up. We tend to sort of start with low numbers and make sure we're getting the build quality exactly where we want. And then they will go out um, very quickly. So customers that have already placed pre-orders will start to fill those first. We do like to do it as a first come, first served. So people, obviously, if you're looking at ordering it, place those in and we get those sorted. But camera shipping, and we'll get those out as soon as possible. Outstanding. And then we've got the newly announced, I say newly announced, but the new announcement for the Ursa 17K yep. and what people can be expecting of that camera, uh, which I feel it's, it's a strange camera because it's the kind of thing that a lot of people get excited about and the idea of having a medium format style sensor yep. in, we say affordable maybe, but yep. it's still a lot of money. It's not, it's not a Pixis, it's not an owner operator camera for those kind of yep. users. Uh, where does it sit? Who's having this? Is it rental houses? Is it productions? Yeah, I think it'd be interesting. I mean, so first of all, yeah, we've announced the pricing for it. So it'd be 29995 US dollars for, for the camera. There's a, a package that you can buy with the EVF included as well. So that's a little bit more expensive. Um, we're showing the camera here at the show for the first time, where it was just a technical statement at NAB. Um, there's still some work to be done. So the camera we're expecting should be available later at the, at the end of the year. In terms of where we expect to see it, yeah, for sure, a camera that can shoot 65 mil IMAX equivalent with 17K resolution is a very niche product from a certain point of view. But we also know there's a desire out there for that kind of resolution, for that kind of image capability. Um, so there'll be rental opportunities and we work and do deal with rental companies that will have opportunities to place that into the market. But we also think, although it is $30,000, um, there's going to be commercial opportunities for people that may want to own that technology, whereas other alternatives out there might be considerably more expensive. And it can expand the capability where we're talking to companies that want to cover live events and staging and capture broad experiences, uh, where we're looking at maybe natural history or very other, other situations where that extra scale of resolution is important. But I think also fundamentally where we're seeing cinematic production, they're always looking to push the envelope in terms of what they can do with large scale format systems. And we're talking to VFX houses and production companies about how they would take that 17K technology 
and put it alongside principal camera photography so they can create an even broader set of tools to tell the story that they want to. So it's going to be really exciting about where that takes us. Um, the camera is developing really well. We're happy with the technology. We're, we're really pleased with the way it looks at the booth and some of the comments even on the first day here have been astounding that people are seeing what this camera can deliver. And then I guess finally just to wrap this up, the the market's always changing. People are always launching new products, making new announcements. Um, does any of this change your trajectory or are you on a path and you know where you're going and you're sticking to it and just maybe nudging here and there where people feed back and it makes sense? Yeah, I think so. Look, our, our philosophy around camera development um, has always been for us to give access to the highest technologies capable um, and release the ability of, let's say, Hollywood level technologies, which 10 years ago, 12 years ago, when we came into the camera market, were prohibitively expensive for most creatives. Our goal has always been to give access to that. So Pixus, as let's say principal example, we have a, a 6K sensor with 12-bit Blackmagic RAW for 3,000 euros in a small, robust, and really versatile camera system that didn't exist five or six years ago for us, and we'll continue to push that development. Then also at the other end of the scale with the immersive camera with the 17K, we're really on the bleeding edge of where we can take our technologies, but with inside of a economically sensible price line. So we always want to design technologies that are accessible. We want to create a environment and a workflow, particularly through post-production to DaVinci Resolve, that is accessible from a cost point of view and from a learning point of view but also then just make sure that we're continuing driving innovation. We listen to customers and we, we work a lot with leading post-production companies on Resolve workflow backwards into the camera that drives our color science and our image technology. And we work with leading DOPs and production houses about how they want cameras to work and function on set. We meld that together and we try to drive and bring the best cameras we can to the market at all times. Craig, thank you very much. It's been interesting, it's been great to hear that uh, people are going to get their hands on these really soon. I'm sure that is, that's what everyone cares about. They just want the stuff and they want to get using it, which, which is going to be great to see what they do with it. Thank you for taking the time to talk to me. And we are going to go around IBC, speak to some more people, so stay tuned to DIY Photography. But in the meantime, have a great day.